I'm even more confused than usual, but I think I know where where, where I am now. So I've been travelling around various parts of Croydon and all over the place. But we've come to um, the first book of Samuel in chapter 4. Now this is much more interesting. And um, I've ventured in the past to speak about um, Samuel. We, we, well, first of all, his mother and how important her work was and, um, and uh, Lord giving her this son and his right from being a small boy um, helping in the temple and or rather the, the sanctuary before the, the full temple was built but um, the priesthood and the sacrifices and we've come down to first the first book of Samuel and can I read at the end of chapter 3 just uh, catching up with the the narrative um, so, chapter 3, verse 19. And we've had a fair bit about his life, and then it, it sort of um, speaks very um, broadly about how he grew up. And we don't know how old he was, actually, when these events happened. But it says in verse 19, that Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan, even to Beersheba, from Land's End to John of Rhodes throughout the country, they knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh. For the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. And the word of Samuel came to all Israel. Now, Israel went out against the Philistines to battle and pitched beside Ebenezer. And the Philistines pitched in Aphek. And the Philistines put themselves in array against Israel. And when they joined battle, Israel was smitten before the Philistines. And they slew of the army in the field about 4,000 men. And when the people were come into the camp, the elders of Israel said, Wherefore, why hath the Lord smitten us today before the Philistines? Let us fetch the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of Shiloh unto us, that when it cometh among us, it may save us out of the hand of our enemies. So the people sent to Shiloh, that they might bring from thence the ark of the covenant of the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth between the cherubims. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were there with the ark of the covenant of God. And when the ark of the covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout, so that the earth rang again. And when the Philistines heard the noise of the shout, they said, What meaneth the noise, this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews? And they understood that the ark of the Lord was come into the camp. And the Philistines were afraid, for they said, God is coming to the camp. And they said, Woe unto us, for there hath not been such a thing heretofore. Woe unto us, who shall deliver us out of the hands, hand of these mighty gods. These are the gods that smote the Egyptians with all the plagues in the wilderness. Be strong and quit yourselves like men, O ye Philistines, that ye be not servants unto the Hebrews, as they have been to you, quit yourselves like men and fight. And the Philistines fought. And Israel was smitten, and they fled every man to his tent. And there was a very great slaughter, for there fell of Israel thirty thousand footmen, and the ark of God was taken. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni 
and Phineas was slain. So to try to say something about this, this is recorded here, it's very, you can see how striking it is. And what a shock when the people of God and the Ark of God, which, you know, as you know, it sort of summed up everything, the Ark of the Covenant, um, it, that was beaten, captured by these um, rampaging, heathen Philistines. Now, we already know that God had spoken about what was wrong in Israel. You know that the little boy Samuel was, was told, given a message from God to go and tell uh, Eli what he thought about what was going on. And uh, Eli, he was the high priest and uh, ceremonial Christ is the high priest of course but the, in, in the Old Testament church God appointed a, a, man, a man in turn in their generations of the house family of, of Aaron to represent Christ to be the high priest and every year to uh, to offer sacrifices for the people before the ark of the covenant and uh, this had been laid down because it was to remind the, the uh, people in Israel and beyond that, that there there is a living God who's made this covenant this, this way his, his idea his plan uh, or we now and of course in the New Testament we use the word the gospel this is the declaration of God's covenant, his great fixed plan to save his people. And um, uh, so the work of Eli and his sons, and they weren't so young, but he was quite old and they, they, they were doing most of the work uh, to help him. Uh, it, was, it was so important um, because um, what they were doing was uh, in by sh actions, by a kind of show, by a kind of play, um, revealing the promises of the gospel. You know that that this the the covenant. We talk about the Ark of the Covenant. People talk, write stories, even make films about the Ark of the Covenant for some reason, but um, forgetting or not knowing what what it was. It was you remember it was a box basically covered with gold wonderful and, um, and but inside what was inside well it was um, just a um, a reminder of, of God's of the two tables of the particularly the two tables of the of the law and um, and, and God had, had put this in right in, in the center of his people in the tabernacle right in the very core and this you know, this is what people were to, to come to, not to the box, but to what it was representing, God's covenant. He would be their God. God is our great friend. And, you know, the covenant goes on. The, the Ark of the Covenant, the box has lost, disappeared years ago. But the covenant is there. And that's what we're, we're, we're told. If God will be our God and Saviour through Christ and through his great work of making peace for us. So it's, you can see how important it was that Eli and his sons should keep showing the truth, de demonstrating the teaching of course the truth wasn't they they just did an action for a show they would they would speak about this as well they 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 um, remember god's law and live righteous lives it all all fitted together and um oh we could go on for ages about that but i'm just trying to make the point that eli and the tabernacle and the ark and the sacrifices were really 
calling people to faith in God. By the show, this is demonstrating, look, you can trust this. You can put your whole life and hope in what God is doing for us and will do in, in Christ. And that's lasting and nobody will change it. Trust in God and his help, the living God. And the dear little Samuel growing up, you know, he was growing up in this and believing it. And the sad thing was that the old man, Eli, and even more than, than he, his sons, were, were forgetting that. They, they, they were treating the ark, the worship, the sacrifice, the priesthood. Tabernacle, all as just some kind of um, well means of them making money and enjoying themselves, and forgetting that if if we the the main thing, the first thing, the, is to seek God and His kingdom, His righteousness. Everything else comes is to come second. You put something in front of that. Mm. I say you, I. I'm saying this to myself. That we've got to put. Christ and his gospel first in our life that's that's where our hope lies seek you first the kingdom <coughs> of heaven the other things God, God won't leave you won't forget you and he, um, as if you didn't need these he knows what we need he knows what, uh, food and clothing and comfort and help he knows it well um, um what what was the message that boy Samuel had had to give? It was well, God was just going to wipe out his priesthood. They it had failed. It's I, I shall read it again, but it's in chapter three. There you know, um, verse eleven. The Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel which both the ears of every one that heareth it shall tingle. To hear it, it would be such a shock, horror, and um, uh, God was going to wipe out this family that had been called to be the priests. Um, that's that's a hard thing to. It was hard for them. It's hard for us that God. Um, he cleanses his temple. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ, when he came in the flesh, he went, went in, because the temple was still standing, it was the Old Testament, you know, representation there. He went in there and clean, cleansed it. Remember, he, he threw out these money changers and it made kind of market out of the temple. Um, and um, it, we... I find it difficult to remember to accept that that God will do that because his church is so important. His gospel is important. I know we don't have, we don't have all the apparatus of the Old Testament. We have the gospel. It's the same covenant, the same Lord, it's the same church, now spread into all the nations. And to, to think, well, God will not tolerate um, endlessly our uh, corruption of his gospel and abuse of our privileges. So um, I was just think, trying to think about this. Um, I often look at things on the internet and you see some very strange pictures sometimes. And um, there was this, uh, I think on YouTube, there was a series of these pictures of people who, um, you know, try to get in the way of some big scheme. You know, somebody, uh, the government somewhere was putting a motorway right through. It's very important, you know, people can move around. And if somebody said, well, it's, you know, I'm not giving in, I've always lived here, I'm gonna stay here. And so there's this picture of this big motorway and built up and it just stops for a bit. And there's this, somebody's farmhouse there. Now I'm not arguing about whether, you know, we quite like to keep our old farmhouse, but um, God's God's gospel and His work in in uh, in time is is so important, and that man's 
the selfishness and folly won't be told. God sweeps. He's, he's, very, he's very merciful with it. He's very gentle. But his, the, the work of the gospel goes forward. And um, it was sad. Um, Eli's ministry just had to go. It's a tragic end, a shameful thing for the, the, his sons, the whole family. They were, they were just taken away. But, be, but because God was going to move his, his kingdom forward. So uh, when we look, if we look in history and we see these tremendous uh, um, upheavals, um, and they seem to be so destructive, and not often they are. But if we read, if we read history and how God works, these upheavals and people being failing and being swept away, even big chunks of the, the church, professing church, that we see how God brings the work of the kingdom forward. And that's a big subject, but I just mentioned that perhaps another time to give some examples. So, um, the sinful, a sinful world, and the church is in a, a sinful world, and um, um, and this is part of the story that we would like to think. Well, we can all settle down, you know, we be peace, and we can settle down in the world and build a better world, build a better world for our grandchildren. Well, of course, we want that. We do. But the Lord says, but. You know, it, you can say peace, peace, but the source of peace, of lasting peace, is in him and in his gospel. And there's no peace promised to those that forget him and reject him. And having, I say, I, you know, I'm sure we'd all agree, we all want peace. We all want everybody to be happy and, and in harmony. Um, but the world is full of wickedness and the rejection of God and God, if we're God's people we've got to take our side with him and put our trust in him um, and not feel well we don't need him anymore we'll, we'll build our own peace now you see I think that was what was I think you'll agree what was happening in Israel um, it's a wicked world and they were surrounded by these nations that were very hostile. They were on the borders. You look at Israel today, the state of Israel. I'm not saying it's the same thing as the Old Testament Israel, but you know, it's there and they're, they're surrounded by hostile nations. We'd love to get at them still. Not rightly or wrongly. But we're not saying they're innocent at all, but it, here is the Old Testament, very much the same country, say, the same areas, here, the Philistines. And um, they were very warlike, very different from, they'd come, and their ancestors had come from Europe. They, so they're very, very different, different language and everything, and very aggressive. And so, um, the, it says in verse two, in verse one, they, the two armies they had to call out, call out the, um, the Jews to get get their weapons. The men who were fighting age, they were expected to fight, could get out. And they encamped, they got together and encamped, and the Philistines were some distance away. And then in verse two, the the Philistines were going to come at them. And uh, so they put they themselves in array. That means to line up the army for battle, to put the men in position to attack or, or to defend, but they were going to attack. And, um, and so did the men of Israel. But, um, in verse 2, Israel, they, got, they, they joined battle. They, they actually, the two armies came together. But Israel was smitten. It was just not flying hmm. before the Philistines. And they slew the army in the field, about 4,000 men. They had to fall back. And they, 4,000 of them, now that was a lot of, lot of men. In one, one attack or one battle, 
and um, and so it was it was a big shock to them because we're the people of Is of God. You know, God saved us out of Egypt. He's given He's given us you know this knowledge of Himself. We're, we're Jews. We're not the heathen. How is it now that you know, we've tried to fight these these horrible Philistines, and God, He could have stopped it. He's sovereign. They believe it. They do believe in God, <laughs> in a way. And and they, uh, yeah, they. It is a um, a perplexity. And so they they gather together. They they retreat. They've they've lost this battle. <coughs> the Philistines are sorting themselves out and uh, looking at their wounded and something and, what, uh, and so on and, and deciding what they're going to do next. And so it they get the Israelites get back to the camp, so their their base we'd say for the. Um, for their operations in verse 3 they get back to base and then the leading men of, of Israel are there because they would be they would be expected um, I mean not the, not the old ones but the, the they would expect to be the officers as well that, that's how it was organized the civic the civil organization of society uh, was was uh, was the same organisation as for the for the war. So the so these the same men who were um, who were the officers, the generals, and um, they, why did this happen? Mm. And um, so it, we can we can understand it. Natural reaction. Why? You know, we, this is we never expected that we're we're on the back foot now. You know, and we've made made to look weak. Foolish, um, and we believe in God. No, we can understand that, can't we? We 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 have experiences. We try and do something for the Lord, and then it, it seems we get w defeated by His enemies. We think, well, that's not right. We're on His side. We, he should be helping. He should be giving us, you know, the ability to score each time. Why is it? Why is it that we are made to look weak and we're put to shame? These people are laughing at us. Why? Um, yeah, yeah. We th that's what we're meant to ask. Why? And we 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 need to seek the Lord again, and it can happen in our own private lives. And the Lord humbles us. He dis he's like a father um, disciplining his children. When we need it, I'm. You say, "Well, speak for yourself." Well, I am. We need it, um, and uh, and it. I think this is very much why. Uh, well, one of the reasons why this is all written down for us because you can see well, what, what went wrong. You know why we've been so slack. We've we've ill. We've we've treated most of us. We've treated the, um, the sacrifices and so on so casually. And uh, the holy things of God, and we compromise, or we cut corners, and our business life is 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 not very honest, and and so um, is God is God telling us something by this this defeat? Shouldn't we come back and um, and, and seek His face again, and try to find out how to please Him? Um, Wherefore hath the Lord smitten us today, this verse 3, before the ph ph Philistines? Ah, someone says, I know. Well, we should have taken the ark with us to battle. Because that's, that's the, um, it's a representation of God's covenant. Of he, he, he's our God, he's with us. You know, and we, we should have taken that into battle with us. Then... Well, we would have been sure to have his help. I mean, he couldn't possibly, you know, with arc, the ark at the front, we couldn't possibly have, have been defeated. 
So that's what we do. So it wasn't we forget you know forget all those about you know some moral question, some um, need to seek, search out hard and humble ourselves. I forget. No, no, no. We 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 didn't. You forgot to do this. So tomorrow or next week, whenever it, they're going to come out there, we're, the Philistines will be at us again. But then we'll be ready. Now send straight away to Shiloh, <coughs> get them to bring the, the, the ark down here. Uh, let us fetch the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of Shiloh unto us, that when it cometh again among us, it may save us out of the hand of the enemy. Um, um, God speaks to us, not only in his word, but in providence. I mean, his, his word is the thing, but then he does things. He gives us experience. Now, and and that should turn us back to the word. Now, what does it say about this? How does it the, his word? How does that explain what has happened? How does it reveal to us his birth? Why this trouble? Is it? it it's not some fault in our military planning. It may be poor simple, but that's not the reason. Um, there's something wrong with us. But they don't say that. No, no. No, that's what it is. No. We'll have another battle and then we'll be we'll we can forget the reverse. We'll have a tremendous success next time with the ark. So Verse 4, they sent to Shiloh, brought the ark. You know, this, this really precious thing because of what it meant. It was this, we don't have these ritual objects, but it, it, in that time it was a precious holy thing. They think, oh, we'll get it out because it's going to be a kind of weapon for it. We have any mm. tanks or anything, but this, this is the kind, and we'll, get, um, we'll, we'll get it in the front line. We'll use it. It's a convenience for us uh, to get what we want. Um, and it wasn't just a few of them that said this, because you notice verse 5, when the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout, so that the earth rang again, and it re-echoed in the, in the valley. You know, And, the, and this woke the, the Philistines up. It says, you know, they say, what, what's going on? What, what this noise? They were very, they were very superstitious. And, oh, well, you know, there's something the, the God of Israel has come to them and, um, you know, we've heard the stories about what he did for them going through the Red Sea and, and, and beating the Egyptian army. The Egyptian army. That's the, the best army in the world. And so, you know, they, they were very nervous. Um, they, they were, you know, it wasn't that they were great heroes and, and men of, of, of great uh, moral standing. They were a, a contemptible enemy that Israel was faced with. But, um, but it does, God has the hearts of all men in his hands. And it, it says, um, um, just abbreviating, must finish in just a moment. Verse 8, Woe unto us, who shall deliver us um, from these mighty gods? And then verse 9, Be strong and quit yourselves like men, O ye Philistines. Come on, you Philistines. We're faced with this. Come on, pull yourselves together. Don't, you know, don't look. Don't give in. Don't run away. Um, be proud of your nation. And... Um, at least, you know, well, give them a good fight, even if they're not confident of victory. And um, so it looks pretty good, doesn't it, for Israel? The um, Philistines are wobbly. They're good fight, very strong fighters, so they don't stand. But you know, it won't take much to get them on the run. They've already got defeat in their minds. Mm. Um, but God, see, God is the God of battles, isn't he? He's called the Lord of hosts. Hosts means armies. And, well, of course, it's the armies of heaven. But uh, 
He has power, and our strength is in him. And we have to learn that. The church has to learn it. And there was this very serious, uh, very harsh lesson. Um, the Philistines fought, and Israel was smitten. So it wasn't just a few thousand. This is 30,000 men were struck down. The, heart, the, the army was absolutely scattered. They didn't re reform for another go. Uh, and the Ark of the Lord was taken, and the priest's sons were killed. So, um, well, it, you'd say, well, that's a cheerful subject to have. It's, it's a story with no happy ending. Um, you know, it was all, it's the end, isn't it? But we know, it's, with God's kingdom, there's no end. It's an everlasting kingdom. And so we have to, we, we need help from God to understand that he is, um, he's with us. And but he brings his church sometimes through very difficult and humiliating circumstances um, because we, we because we need it. Also, as I say, um, this this very drastic setback was actually preparation for a move forward and taking away the house of the family of Eli actually was preparing to bring Samuel. Uh, and it, and the word of God, the preacher, centrally into people's minds. This uh, rubbish was cleared away so that people should be brought back to um, this great, uh, great um, promise of of full salvation, of of blessing and eternal life in Christ and. Oh, for the church, the church can never be defeated. Um, the kingdom of God, it, it goes, must go for. It must, you know, Christ must go for. It's like he's the great general in charge of his church, you know. But he, but he fights with um, with his word, the word, and he goes forth conquering and to conquer. Um, so. Um, there isn't time to go on now, but just to say this, you know, you know the, the situation for us is, is not completely different from what it was to Israel. You see, the, the, we think in our fo human folly, the church today, the modern church, it's all still in the news in one way or another. We think, oh, we'll just go on as we've always gone on. You know, God's on our side, must be. You know, and we'll have our great, great services in St Paul's Cathedral and so on are really congratulating ourselves and not noticing that, that God is saying something to us and by you know the chaos and what do, what do people put their trust in they, they even these clerics you see they, they, they put their trust in some great new ceremony some some great um, some great do some great new gesture and there's always something some new ceremony all frippery and and uh, dressing up instead of coming back to God now that sounds a very harsh thing to say but I mean you know I've got to say well I'm part of the church as well now where, where do I fit into that mm. God, I have to I, I have to examine myself and so w we suffer the setbacks the church is, is it looks foolish and defeated by atheists and, uh, and, uh, and um, a heathen and uh, mocked we're mocked and we've lost we're like of course we, you feel like Samson when he's had his hair cut we feel we're so weak as if we've all had flu, you know, we can't do anything. But God teaches us by this, and so it is a there is a happy sequel that God will never leave us nor forsake us. And so the setbacks really should always t 
bring us back to seek him with all our heart and mind and soul and strength. Mm. So I hope that's not too, um, too negative um, mm. a message this morning. May we, God encourage us in his word. So shall we just pray again? So we thank thee, O God, that we are called to serve thee. We feel our service is so weak and we, we are distracted on many other things and uh, many are like us. And we see the church, which is just like Israel of old, it goes to some object and it thinks it can uh, make things better by mm. some new plan when what we need is repentance and the supply of thy spirit. And so ref refresh us and help us, O oh God, help our nation and lead us out of the confusion that really arises out of our trust in men rather than in God and in human wisdom rather than in thy pure word. Help us, we pray. Be with us now. Pardon our sins. Be with us for the rest of the day, we mm. pray. Now the God of peace, that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every work, good work, to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. Amen.